Her history is almost as vivid as the tale she tells. Paulina Simons, a Russian-born American author with several compelling novels to her credit. Tully first brought her international acclaim, there have been several bestsellers since, and her new book, The Bronze Horseman, is no different, capturing the imagination of readers from one side of the globe to the other. Hello. Hi. And a certain Mr. Paul Holmes. Yes. Who you've been talking to is raving about this book. You're, yes, you're, you're costing him sleep. <laughs> he is hilarious. He says, I usually have a nap in the middle of the afternoon. I couldn't do that today. He couldn't put the book down. He couldn't put the book and down. I've got it. I've got this is extraordinary. I've got an email from someone called Megan Inglis who says, um, one of the most fantastic books I've ever read. I have felt, never felt so emotional over a book before. I'm still pining over the end. I was wondering, could you have a sequel? Because she's desperately hoping the end will change, obviously. If she's listening, tell her, yes, we yeah. could. You're working on yes, it? Yes, tell her it's finished. We just have to hand it in. Oh, really? Have to rewrite it a little bit, revise it, and, uh, and hand it in. Well, yeah. there'll be one very happy Megan oh, Inglis so out there. I'm so excited for her, yeah. Your early life, I mean, t take me back to a small girl. How much do you remember of growing up in Russia? Uh, quite a lot. I mean, I was, uh, you know, 10 when we left, so I remember it quite vividly. remember living there, being raised there, my parents, my family. You remember mm -hmm. your father being imprisoned for... I didn't know he was imprisoned because um, they told me he was on a business trip. It was a long business th trip. It was about three years, Yeah, wasn't it? it was three years he was gone from us. Um, but, you know, I was very young and didn't really question it. I knew he was g gone. I just didn't know what or how or where. I didn't find out until we were out of Russia. Is that kind of how people dealt with it? They didn't talk about it. They just got on the Well, I guess the women just had to get on with their lives, They didn't did. They? My mom, you know, had a hard time because she was on her own and had to work and raise a small child. But... Um, so she just uh, suffered and did the best she could, but she didn't want to tell me to involve me in that whole mess. Your father must be remarkable in that he managed over that time of imprisonment to learn English. He, he was quite, he's still quite remarkable, yeah. yeah. And you wouldn't think that of him because if you see him, he's defeated by the smallest things. And yet this is the man who got us out of Russia. You wouldn't expect it. You think, how can he do, he can't even, you know, get out of the parking lot without saying, oh, we can't, look, this exit is closed, we can't go anywhere. And yet he got us out of a, a whole country, you know. How did he get you out of Russia? Uh, he um, had to apply for permission to leave. Um, and it was a period of detente between Brezhnev and Nixon, and so we just were lucky in that we happened to be right before, we happened to leave right before the Yom Kippur War of 1973, and it was, it was uh, just a good time. We left on an Israeli visa because that was the only way to get out of Russia at the time. So you arrive in New York. I mean, I can remember arriving in New York as a big girl and being overwhelmed. So yeah. as a small girl, it must be quite amazing. It was, yeah, it was quite amazing. But it was, it was also, it was a big adventure, you know, and so the parts of an adventure that were, weren't so good and there were parts that were... Great. You, in the end, though, had a pretty American, normal kind of two cars in the driveway upbringing and schooling, yeah. didn't you? My sister had it better than I had because she was born a little later into the family. By the time my parents had the house and the two cars in the driveway, I had already gone to college, uh, you know, kind of a thing. So I didn't, I didn't have as much of that as she did, but she was uh, luckier in that respect. A couple of husbands. It's interesting reading your bio. <laughs> it reads as husband number one. I thought, oh, okay, I can relate to this. <laughs> Yeah. Husband number one. <laughs> Husband number one. What English. Did, what did Birmingham you do with him? You got sick of him, right? Well, he um, he was very Birmingham, Birmingham, born and raised. <laughs> Bur and you know, we just uh, there were the, we had class problems. He wanted to spend all day in the pub, and I didn't want him to. So we decided perhaps it was best. It's to really part fundamental, ways. isn't it? Really, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was best to part ways. Um, uh, you know, but he's he's a he's a great guy. We, now now we're even better friends than we were when we were married. So. And yeah. you're back. You went back to the U.S. where you met husband number two. Yes, but husband number two I've known since I was 17 years old. We've been best friends since I was 17. He was best man at my first wedding. <laughs> and now we've been now married for seven years together for ten. Is there a novel here? In Do your you life? Think? Well, I think there's a story, isn't there, there's somewhere in it? Something in there. It took you a long time to get to the Bronze Horseman. It took how many yeah. books before you got there? Three. Yeah. Three. And, a, and a fourth one that I actually have not published yet called uh, Six Days in Leningrad. It's a nonfiction book about my trip to Russia. But Which was so that? Was the trip to research the Bronze Horseman, yeah, was it? exactly, in 1998. What was that like going back after 25 years? It was, uh, you know, difficult. It was very hard to see Russia the way it was because so many things have remained exactly the same as I remembered them and the way my father remembered them. In fact, not much had changed ever since the war. And this is the war that we fought for a better life, you know, better life than Hitler was going to offer us. Remember, this was 20 million Russians went to their death to save this country from Hitler. And there we are 50 years later, and we're still living that same life. 
while Germany has sprung forward, Japan has sprung forward, England, America, of course, has mm. superseded it all, but Russia is still in that same place, just isn't without the gulags. I mean, tragic, it was just, isn't it? It was. I mean, just impoverished, bankrupt, broken life, no money for anything, and, and no hope for anything either. So it's difficult. What is the great, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who's not Russian who has, there's an enormous fascination I feel for that country. There is yeah. something about it, having just read about it and never been. Do you know oh what it God. is? Because it's just, it's so almost like mysterious and yet romantic. There is somehow passion associated with Russia, some kind of an exotic passion, something about the Russian emotions that are just born out of that cold and ice and vodka and drunkenness <laughs> that just somehow, <laughs> I think, inspire us. Yeah. Fourth child on the way. Child, just know. a few weeks pregnant. That's great yeah. news, isn't it? So there's yeah, a child every book. How many books are you planning on writing? Oh no, please don't say that. <laughs> I plan to write into my early 80s, maybe early 90s. What do you think? So you're going to stop having kids I at some point, so. really? I you? think so, don't you think? Yeah. After my next twins, I think I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you, the follow-up. When when can my poor writer uh, write oh, get the follow-up? Yeah, uh, August 2002. Okay, well I guess you can wait that long. Yeah, it's been fantastic so. talking to you. It's been great talking to you, Susan. Probably Thank you for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Up next, the film that had actor Katie Wolf stalking Wellington streets after dark. Well, hey, you want to end up like your friend back there? Demon's a real buddy. As real as you and me. Oh.